Welcome to a visual hymn note. I'm Rebecca Abbott. I help people connect to their musical heritage through exploring music and text. Today we're looking at O Blessed Spring, set to the folk tune O Wally Wally, which some of you know as The Water is Wide. We'll be using the setting in the Lutheran Service Book at number 595. I am going to sing the first stanza, then we'll talk about it, we'll work on memorizing the first stanza, and finally I'll sing the entire song. Oh, blessed spring, where word and sign embrace us in true Christ the vine. Here Christ enjoins each one to be a branch of this life-giving tree. When I look at a new hymn, after the first pleasure of scanning the text and sounding out the melody, the next thing I want to discern is its meter. This will give me more of a clue of where to look for key words, where to place emphases, what the overall feel of the piece might be. In this case, the hymnal tells us below the tune name that O Wally Wally is LM, long meter. So we expect four lines of eight syllables each. But we are deceived. O Wally Wally is a strange and wonderful little tune that really feels like eight lines of four syllables each. They're very short phrases. You heard them as I sang and you can see them clearly on the page because each one ends with a dotted note held longer than the three syllables just before it. No exceptions. This is a rather demanding meter in which to write. It means that the poet has to fit meaning into each group of four syllables and make each of those eight lines a tiny poem, a distinct group of words that could stand by itself. We're going to remember those short lines because we're not rushing through them. We're lingering on the last note of each line. Mostly the poet succeeds in that, using short words to end most lines on a single syllable word. Look, for example, at the opening of each of the five stanzas, all ending with single syllable words. O oh, blessed spring, through summer heat, when autumn cools, as winter comes, Christ holy vine. But, there are five places where the poet couldn't resist acting as though she were in long meter and carried a word across a line. Think, though, of why she may have done this. First example. In the first stanza, we have, Embrace us in true Christ the vine. We're embraced and drawn into something. We're pulled across the boundary of ourselves into something else. Second example, in the third stanza we have, When limbs their heavy harvest hold. The tree limbs are so heavy that one line is not enough to hold their harvest. Third example, also in the third stanza, with gifts of beauty, wisdom, love. The experience of beauty invites us to leisure and contemplation beyond a single compartmentalized moment. This too is a sort of word painting through the rhythm, through sustaining this note across the lines. Fourth example, same melodic location as the third, but in the fourth stanza. And trust the promise of the spring. What do we fundamentally know about promises? We have to wait for their fulfillment. We have to wait to end this word, too. It can build character to sing a song aright. Okay, last example, fifth stanza. Fat word and revive. This is 
really the most awkward of the five examples to sing because even though we have that nice ah, vowel, it's on the highest pitch. The high pitch and the surprise of the word being carried across the line in this particular place in the melody where no word has been carried across before psychologically represent a sort of ecstasy with the concept of water. If we look at the previous two lines, be praised for this blessed mystery, I think then that these two lines are trying to help us experience water as sacrament. All right, you can memorize this. Uh, you've already grasped the basic structure of comparing the human lifespan to seasons of the year, spring, summer, autumn, winter, and how we behave as branches of the tree of life. Which phrase, by the way, does not occur until the very end as a conclusion for the whole piece. We are enjoined at the beginning of the song as in told to act a certain way, but by the end we are just joined to the tree of life. Christ does it for us regardless of how we've acted. We're going to work for a moment on memorization and then just sing the whole thing. I'm going to speak the first stanza two times. The second time, I'll leave out some words and you try to fill them in. O oh, blessed spring, where word and sign embrace us into Christ the vine. Here, Christ enjoins each one to be a branch of this life-giving tree. In what season do we start? You fill in the blanks. O oh, blessed, where word and sign embrace us into Christ the... Here Christ enjoins each one to be a branch of this life-giving... Let's sing this. <laughs> Blessed spring, where word and sign embrace us into Christ the vine. Here Christ enjoins each one to be.
I'm Rebecca Abbott. This has been a visual hymn note. Thank you for watching. Never stop singing.